Hey everybody, I am Katrina from In Cat We Trust and we have another episode of Kicking Back With Cat. And here I have with me Gem Gemini. How are you today? Hi, hello. I am doing so good. Thank you, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. It's I'm trying not to like, I don't know if you can hear this like work happening outside of my building right now. So I'm trying mm. to like minimize <laughs> the no, noise fine. that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you've done a lot of podcasts or people ask you, but I'm always interested when I'm, you know, when I'm interviewing wrestlers and stuff, it's like the journey kind of getting there. So what was your moment for you where you was like wrestling is something I definitely want to do with my career? Okay. I love that. Um, usually I love this question specifically because usually they ask you like, how did you get into wrestling? Not the, how did you know you wanted to stay in wrestling? Um, I, okay, when I first started wrestling and as a woman going into wrestling and not having any other women with you, it's a little bit intimidating. And initially I wanted to start when I was 18 and I, I started here in San Bernardino, California at Jesse Hernandez's. And though it was like something I loved doing, it was really intimidating to me. And and just like at 18 years old, I really did not, I I didn't have anybody who who was uh, that like assurance for me. Uh, fast forward, I'm 20, I moved to Colorado. I have some wrestling experience, maybe like a couple months and I go to Colorado and I start doing Rocky Mountain Pro Wrestling there, trying it out, getting back into it. And that's when I knew like, I want to do nothing but this. <laughs> I found something that was fulfilling in my life um, that made me feel like, I'm sure everybody who gets into this is like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Why else would they be in here? And I was one of those people who was like, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I feel like I'm going to be uh, successful enough and I'm, I'm, this is what I love to do. And not only that, but when I was um, performing and uh, even for my, my, my teammates, right, my, my crew, I, I just felt an overall sense of, of pride something I was proud to do and succeed in. And um, I wanted to never stop doing it. I love to train in it. I love to perform, of course, but training is something that honestly, every time I do it, I feel like any mental health issue I have is gone for that four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would you say moving to another state, was that hard for you to have to kind of like up with yourself and then move to another state to kind of get the hang of wrestling? I think it uh, finally gave me my sense of independence once I moved out of the state. Um, here I was still living with all my siblings. Um, I was still, you know, I, I, I was just working my part-time job. I was going to school, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And now, honestly, my major <laughs> connects with wrestling in that I want to have my own foundation. And so right now I'm just going to school and wrestling and that's my whole life. And I'm lucky enough to uh, support myself in all of that. And uh, I'm proud of everything I do. So having that transfer, you know, it, it made me, it forced me to become who I am as a person and therefore realize what I love and what I don't love. <laughs> and one of those things that I love is wrestling. That's amazing. That I think the dude that's so young and kind of have an idea like this is, like this is, you know, like when you're like at the end of high, like teenage years and you're like, yeah. is college the route for me or do I want to have just a regular job and it's always trying to figure it out. And then you might think you know you want what you want to do, and then life is like maybe that's not the idea. Not. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the fact that you were still able to kind of stick to, like this is something I want to do, and you stuck with that regardless is really amazing to do so, and to do so so young like that's like super amazing. 
<laughs> so with regards to if you've never, if someone never seen your character before and you wanted to kind of like sell yourself, rather show the person who you are for the first time watching you in the ring, how would you yeah. describe your persona as a wrestler? Okay, so coming back to California, I have gone through so many, just feeling the crowd, so many changes, These the different crowd, right? Um, so my character persona, Gem Gemini, she's a gamer girl. She's a streamer. She doesn't take herself super seriously. And she is the underdog by default. I am four foot eight. So just going in there, <laughs> I'm at a slight disadvantage. <laughs> so uh, it's very playful, uh, very energetic. She has so much energy. And um, I talk about it in the third person, I guess. <laughs> it's like a whole different <laughs> version of me. <laughs> um, and coming in here and performing in California, I've realized that, um, sorry, I've, I've been given a nickname that I've adopted now. Um, in the Lucha crowd, they chanted La Chaparita, and that means basically little one endearingly in Spanish. And so, um, yeah, still, uh, I say a ball of fire <laughs> I try to embody. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I'm 5'2", so I'm not like 4'8", but 5'2", is yeah. like I consider that super short and like <laughs> I'm the oldest of my siblings, there's six of us, and I'm the smallest one. So it's always the joke mm -hmm. is like, how you're like the older sister, yet you're like the tiny one. And I'm like, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. know, like, what are the odds? So hey, I hey. always love when you have like <laughs> tiny women that can still be super badass. It's always like, yes, I always cheer for women like that because it's like, hello, <laughs> we <laughs> like us tiny, women, <laughs> us tiny women can be super badass and be tiny. So I, oh, I love um, that, that you're like, you call yourself like a ball of fire. That's like, what are the yeah. things I love about smaller statured women? So uh, I fight Ooh. for the little guy and I take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may not be the biggest, but I do be the baddest. That's what I like saying. <laughs> <laughs> Who is an opponent that you have wrestled that you would say is probably one of your favorite matches that you've had over the time you've been wrestling? Oh, okay. I think there, there's... There's two matches that I just enjoy, that I genuinely enjoyed every second of it. Um, one of them was wrestling against Mighty Myra. She's one of the opponents that's smaller. So was I was finally able to like have an equal matchup. Um, and she's 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 little. Um and her working as a heel and and it was just so much fun. She works so well. Her presence, she makes it known. And uh, everything she does in that ring is is honestly beautiful. And uh, she just recently got to wrestle against Thunder Rosa. So I thought that was amazing. <laughs> so that was one of my like most fun matches. Um, another match that I've had uh, was a, a tag match with uh, uh, Zyra and uh, Everly Rivera, as well as Lindsay Cash. And um, I've never felt more comfortable to get hit. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they're such safe people. <laughs> and uh, all of them have so much talent that when I'm in there and I'm so glad that I met them and, and got to train with them, um, getting to do a bunch more lucha things because they are willing to take it they're down and getting to put on this match that um this crowd uh was was waiting for a, a, a rematch part two and and you know you don't get that all the time from women's matches so it was really beautiful that i got to experience that i got thrown into a chair that was fun <laughs> you know it's just great memories <laughs> That's, I, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned the safety thing. I think that's always important also, like, I guess, for wrestlers who's getting in the ring is, like, make it believable, but also workers take care of each other. So that's always so, so, such an important thing. So that's it's amazing to have. And then have four women that's just kind of able to, like, we're going to do whatever and just kind of, you know, let it vibe. That's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> what is something that is, like, you've learned over your course of like wrestling so far that it's like an important lesson that you kind of still hold with you even to this day uh oh an important
important lesson I've learned in wrestling. Um, I, that if you don't think that there's people there supporting you, there always is. <laughs> it's sometimes you can feel like you're uh, not capable of doing something or you're just like really down. And um, I've struggled in the past a lot with mental health. And um, I, if you've ever read AJ Lee's book, uh, Crazy is My Superpower, it's one of my, it is my favorite book. <laughs> um, she, she talks about getting through life in general and having mental health issues and having a, parents and people close to her that have mental health issues. And um, when you're in wrestling, it's something I really wanted to do. And it's just that some days it's hard to get out and I your brain makes you think that you don't have anybody, anybody there for you, regardless of your friends, family, your brain is just like, nah, we're, we're alone in this. Um, I have had the opportunity, being independent, moving to Colorado, getting into wrestling, people saying like, we, we all struggle with this at some point. And I'm like, wow. And they're like, yeah, financially wrestling is not the most, uh, <laughs> you know, um, how can I put it? The, the e easiest to get through, you know, uh, yeah. training, traveling, that all comes out of pocket. And, you know, f it's hard to try to juggle wrestling your job and, and traveling and training. And it's, it can get to a lot of people, but um, we're not alone in this. And I'm, I'm really happy to learn that I, I can be there for other people, just like how they are there for me when I needed it. And I try really hard to just wrestlers that I haven't talked to in months just call up and be like, hey, how's your brain? <laughs> and uh, just creating that environment. Uh, you are basically the environment that you want to be in. Um, it could be really toxic or it could be not toxic at all and really welcoming. Uh, so coming back to California to the same gym that I came in and was really overwhelmed and didn't want to continue, uh, I came in and was the complete opposite of what I was feeling at the time. And to no fault of everybody else, it's just, it was a transitional period in indie wrestling. Um, I'm just babbling now, but uh, I'm going on and on. But uh, yes, okay. the lesson that I learned, <laughs> the lesson that I learned is uh, being there for people just like I, uh, they were there for me. I want to th actually thank you for mentioning mental health. I feel like one, I did read AJ Lee's book. I felt like I read every wrestler's book at least once. <laughs> like, sure, a wrestler read a book. I'm like, yeah. okay, I read anyway. I'm a, re I'm a big reader. So why not? I know who this person is. Let me just read, like, kind of hear some, like, insight. It's different kind of stepping behind the curtain yeah. that we get on TV. So I absolutely loved her book as well. And I thought it was an also important, um, her mentioning how important mental health is. I think she still talks about it even to this day where she mentions mm -hmm. how that important it is. Because it is important, especially, like, you know, wrestling when I was a kid growing up, you know, we didn't really have social media and stuff. And so, like, we have now we have social media on top of, like, everything else that's going on. And unfortunately, you know, you can already struggle with things, but then social media sometimes can amplify those things because people aren't always as kind or you seem like, you know, people put things that they want people to see sometimes so you might not feel as accomplished as the next person and that can take a toll on you mentally so thank you for mentioning that I feel like that's something you know people should be more honest and like not to say your whole like life story or anything but just like everybody do struggle from time to time with just feeling like okay with themselves if they're accomplishing enough are they doing everything they wanted to do at a certain like there's no time limits but sometimes you gotta learn that it's not a time limit you can do it when you get there when you get there so that's important so thank you for mentioning yeah, <laughs> that I, I feel like that's always something that people should be more open talking about like listen we can have good days and sometimes it's mm -hmm. a little harder you know the next to get to the next day and you just you yeah know, have people in your in your corner to support and stuff of course mental health is the same thing as physical health you know you want to do your best to try to treat yourself and um physical health nobody nobody um really minds talking about you know how i broke my leg you know um i think that it is spread across the masses at this point unfortunately but at the same time because of that we should be comfortable 
talking about, like this exchange um, right now. Definitely. So who was, all right, I know we all have our favorite wrestlers, but who was the wrestler that when you were younger, you <laughs> had to watch? Like, absolutely, like, no matter what it was, time it was or what pay-per-view, you had to watch them. <laughs> it has always been uh, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> um, I He was honestly the first wrestler that made me cry like as a kid i would cry <laughs> watching his matches and i was in like complete tears in his retirement match and getting that's exactly all that i want to do in wrestling is the same thing that he did is take people out of the reality and i've said this a million times and i'll say it again to take somebody out of the reality for a second or even a microsecond that's what i want in my life they might need it for whatever reason just a distraction maybe they need to be taken out entirely for a whole four hours you don't know <laughs> but you getting to be a part of that experience is is beautiful and i'm glad that i was able to witness his matches that are just so iconic <laughs> and everything he's been in just the way he moves the cell and everything it just blew my mind as a kid and still now <laughs> Uh, so you're about to be like my best friend now because <laughs> <laughs> this person got me into yeah. wrestling as well. Like Jeff Hardy made it a lot Shawn worse. Michaels. <laughs> I got a little obsessive when Jeff Hardy came in, but Shawn Michaels is literally what for me, like I thought he was like the most handsomest person and then he was like so like like entertaining and just so much flair. And I'm like, y'all wish I could be as amazing as Shawn Michaels. Like yeah. I would argue anybody. <laughs> I would argue anybody. Like, listen, y'all can have whatever. Shawn Michaels is like top, top. Yeah, top, 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 top. tier, S tier <laughs> yes. wrestler. He's like, and you know what's interesting <laughs> is that like, I had wrestlers who I was like, as a kid, I was like, oh my God, they're so attractive. And though Shawn Michaels was my favorite wrestler, I never thought like, I was never like, physically attracted to him but I loved that he was con like super confident you know like it he had yeah. the sexy boy like that is him that's his gimmick that's <laughs> owned by him I it's iconic <laughs> <laughs> so now I have to know what is your favorite Tri Michaels match it has to be his retirement match with, <laughs> with uh, Undertaker I I was drenched. I ripped a pillow off the couch just to cover my face. Like it was this whole thing. I, from one match, of course, like from feeling that, I had a day of memories of my siblings trying to console me. <laughs> and it's like a good memory that I hold near and dear to my heart. And he created that. So <laughs> that's the best part as like as a, as a fan. It's like you get a person that you love so much and then they you it's like they do something there's a match or a moment that like 15 years 20 years later you're still like can remember exactly the way you felt when that match happened yeah. <laughs> he's definitely a person who's done that to you multiple times too so it's like yeah it's like, <laughs> I love Mr. Shawn Michael. <laughs> so definitely agree if there's who's one person that you would love to step into the ring with but you haven't had a chance to do so yet anybody Ooh. any promotion just like if it was like free fall like you and somebody <laughs> else in the ring who would it that person yeah. be and why okay so i would love i okay i love the way then the rosa moves so i'm i'm always i love that um and i would love to get the chance to wrestle her but i think sky blue is such a talented wrestler and has um, kind of like a similar in-ring style as I do in, as um, her wrestling is. So I would love to get the chance to, to have that opportunity to, to have that matchup of somebody that's such a strong wrestler. Um, and she's not, you know, towering and super big. And um, I fortunately <laughs> get to wrestle uh, such like tall women. Um, but having yeah. somebody who's like a better matchup is always fun because I get to do different things. <laughs> or you know, AJ Lee, but we're not we're not, <laughs> we're not trying to hurt her neck. <laughs> never, never. I mean, those are three really great choices, though. I feel like Thunder Rose is amazing. I absolutely love what she does in and outside of the ring. 
she's so like phenomenal all around. And then AJ Lee was one of my favorites because she was tiny. So it's like I get I love women who's like super tiny and can still yeah. like dominate. And she yeah. did that. So <laughs> yeah, honestly, and then it's Sky. I've gotten like to see her recently. She's pretty solid in the ring too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then going back to AJ Lee, like. I'm as big of a mark on AJ Lee as I am to Michaels um, because it was, I was gifted her book as a uh, a birthday present when I was 18. And after reading through that whole thing, that's when I was like, okay, maybe I can go into wrestling. Like maybe it's, it's a thing that I can actually do. And it was, I couldn't even fathom that thought beforehand and reading her book is just like, so to be able to get in the ring with somebody that, that is basically the person who put me into wrestling, I'll try my best not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you never know with the universe. I am a firm believer in putting things out into the universe and maybe it will manifest. So yeah. <laughs> you never know. Maybe her neck will be fine and we can get that match. Because I would love to see her wrestle again as well. So yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting. <laughs> Just give me one more match, AJ Lee. So I would love to see her wrestle again. So you never know, right? The day that <laughs> happens, the day she returns to the ring, Everybody is going to freak out. I mean, everybody freaked out when she signed with WOW. Um, yeah. To um, uh, run WOW. And I'm just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> what is, like, in the next five years, per se, what are some things that you want to do in your wrestling career that you haven't had a chance to do yet? Oh, I want to train with... Um, I want to train in both Mexico and Japan. Um, fortunately, just recently, I've been given the opportunity to go and uh, train in Mexico. So I'm so excited for that to come. I know it's going to awesome. be really tough, but it's I, I'm just super excited, that whole lucha aspect and, and honing that skill. And then hopefully in the future, I would love to get the ch chance to train in Japan. Women wrestlers coming out of there just so such strong competitors and can tell such an amazing story. So I would love to get there. <laughs> Training. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I absolutely love Japanese wrestling. I tell people all the time, it's like, I like WWE, you know, but like, I love like New Japan and stardom. It's like amazing. Stardom, like, they're yep. so hard hitting. And they be, I'm like, oh my God, like, does it hurt? But also I know you guys can handle it, but then I'm the person watching. So I'm like stressed yeah. about it. <laughs> You're like, ah, wait, oh, I'm watching this. Yeah. So you did mention you are a Twitcher, but you're also a gamer. So what are some of your favorite video games to play? <laughs> okay, I like playing a lot of casual like indie games. Um, I don't play a lot of first person shooters mostly because I'm not great, but uh, I was really big into Overwatch. <laughs> um, uh, my favorite game has to be either Fallout New Vegas or uh, this game I've played a million, million times. It's my comfort game that's called The Flame and the Flood. Uh, so I, I I love games that can like tell a story. Uh, maybe I don't have to panic during them, you know, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are some of my favorite games and getting back on Twitch and streaming is, uh, I'm playing Lost in Random right now. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not like a hardcore gamer either. It's like when I was younger, I was like telling my kids, so I was like, back then it's like, you knew there's a couple of buttons. Yeah. And it wasn't just stressful. It's like, now it's like, you got to use the whole controller. I'm like, all right. And then sometimes like certain games will have totally different buttons than the game you played before. Then you got to remember that. And I'm like, that's a lot of work sometimes. So I don't play like hardcore games, but I do like games with stories. This is one of my favorite type of games was like, either they have to be scary or like, cause I like horror stuff. I'm that weirdo that likes all this creepy stuff. But I also, love like, horror stuff, but I'm terrified. I cannot sit through a scary game by myself. <laughs> I love horror <laughs> stuff, but I'm a big baby when it comes to like even even things like uh like old Resident Evil games where you can hardly tell that the that the that the zombies are like like physically different, like they're so pixelated. But um, 
I, I still get scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of my favorite horror games is like Resident Evil. And I really like the Evil Within. Well, the first one, because it was like super okay. indie feel. And yeah. I liked it. So it's like, I like that it was like story, scary stuff. And then it was like super like, per felt more personal than some of the bigger games. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. definitely liked a bunch of those. So I'm going to do a speed round of questions. Uh, okay. And <laughs> <laughs> you tell me the first thing that pops in your head once I ask the question. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you a morning person or a night owl? Night owl, by far. <laughs> I hate mornings. <laughs> Last show you binge watched? Uh, Hunter Hunter. <laughs> Anime? Yeah. I feel like, yes, okay, I did. I was Hunter right. I, knew, I know what that is. <laughs> now that you said that, what is your favorite anime? Hunter Hunter, <laughs> only because I barely get into anime, so I I've been yelled at by my friends for for a while. Um, barely getting into into anime. I watch My Hero. Hun now it's Hunter Hunter, and I'm waiting to see what's next. Maybe an hour. <laughs> As you can see from like my wall, yeah. <laughs> Naruto is like one of my favorite animes. That's like my favorite character. So <laughs> I love them. Super cool. So. I, I mean, I feel like my friends did the same thing with me, the anime. They were trying to get me to watch it for years. I'm like, I don't know. And then, like, 2019, I just started watching a bunch of it. I was like, okay, I slapped, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> should have been. I should have watched it sooner. My bad. Yeah, my bad, guys. But I'm here now, so. <laughs> Last song you had on repeat. Ooh. Uh, I think it was... I... I Let's see. Jesse Reyes. No, no, no. I don't know who sings it, but it's called A Letter to My Younger Self. And I have no idea who sings it. But my sister <laughs> sent me the song. And because I miss her, she lives too far. And she sent me the song. I've just been like, ah, <laughs> playing the song on repeat. <laughs> so cute. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite snack that no matter what time of the day it is, no matter what day of the week it is you will always eat <laughs> i'm a small latina woman it's hot cheetos <laughs> <laughs> i'm ashamed i'm ashamed my diet could never Listen, don't be, don't be ashamed okay i'm like that's my thing is always cheesecake it's bad and i'm like if i ever die it's probably gonna have like i'm gonna have cheesecake in my hand somewhere it's yeah. gonna be somewhere it's like <laughs> it's bad okay <laughs> my really my bad. favorite snack to have if i have it just because it's really it's a weird snack. Um, in Mexico, where my family's from, they like have dried shrimp in bulk. So my family sends it every now and then. And I just have dried shrimp with, with uh, lemon and chili and just go ham on <laughs> like chips. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, that's an alternative. <laughs> Favorite movie of all time. Ooh, ah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> Great movie. Such a good movie. <laughs> it's yeah. a great movie. <laughs> and we are like holidays. So what is your favorite Christmas movie? <laughs> I am obsessed with awful Christmas movies. Like with the whole like <laughs> like you know what's coming to an end what what's gonna be at the end. Uh -huh. I'm not sure I have a favorite Christmas movie. I we uh, why I miss my sister so much right now is because we binge watch all the Hallmark movies <laughs> for Christmas time. So I'm going to say any Hallmark movie uh, because they're all the same. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. It's like. I write romance books, so it's like, and mine's is definitely not Hallmark. I'm like, listen, I'm not this, like, I'm not super R-rated, but I'm not this PG either. It's like, yeah. <laughs> we gotta get maybe a kiss, maybe some hand-holding. It's like, yeah. they know they're gonna end up together at the end. That's Do you small have town. a favorite <laughs> romance book that you could recommend? Oh, man. Oh, there's so many. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, re I read so many things. Um, If you like um more racy type books i would suggest somebody like maybe like mia hopkins Alyssa cole um if you want more like 
sweeter, like, or young adult type ones. There's like Jennifer Nevin who writes, I mean, there's so many. I can always just like shoot you over. Yes. I, I'm a thank big you. <laughs> I can definitely <laughs> just shoot writing you over. Down. <laughs> I'm going to just shoot you a message because there are so many. Like, I read so much and it's like my bookcase is probably like ashamed because it's like I have so many books now that they, they can't fit on the bookcase. So they kind of just sit in there. I'm like, I am so sorry, books. Like, I don't want to treat you like this, but I can't stop buying books. Yeah. <laughs> so I, just because I just. I just got into reading. I know it's a weird thing to say because <laughs> everybody, you, you read since you're a kid, but um, like reading casually on my own and uh, the person who got me into it um, suggested uh, this romance book and I am loving it. So I'm like, perfect, let's, <laughs> let's get more. <laughs> <laughs> Which book is it? It's actually right here beside me. It is uh, Soulless by Gail Carrie Oh, nice. I've read that. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Yeah. I'll definitely have to shoot you a message with like a whole bunch of like, okay, here's the books. <laughs> just check yeah, out. But now your audience can have some more of those recommendations, you know? They have they have like three, four names. <laughs> <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, oh my gosh. Since I was a kid, when I was asked this, I would always say, um, Oh my god, I can't think of the word. There's one word for it, but to be able to like change your body into whatever like person, whatever like animal or every like basically like a druid. <laughs> yeah, transformation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like my brain can't think of the word. I'm just gonna describe it. <laughs> yeah, I think it. You can get a lot of use. I basically want to be Beast Boy. Uh, is is my thing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, listen, he, he's pretty cool. He's pretty yeah. cool. So. <laughs> One of my favorite Titans. <laughs> so you said that. Are you a DC or Marvel girl? Uh, uh, oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> I, I read a lot of comic books. <laughs> I, honestly, I think both of them have something to offer. Um, I started collecting the uh, detective detective comic books, so of course, love Batman, love uh, all of the Robins. <laughs> I cosplayed as Carrie Kelly once, and I, oh, nice. I'm just like, I love DC, but all the Marvel movies are superior, and my favorite super superhero is Spider Man. So I guess by default, I'm a Marvel person. <laughs> You know what, though? That's funny, because, like, I like Batman as well. Like, if I'm going off DC, people, it would probably, the first person to always come to mind is Batman. I love yeah. the Joker. I think, like, Joker is, like, my perfect villain. If yeah, you not all, exactly. Their villains are, like, of, I mean, of course, Marvel villains are also well-rounded, but I feel like the Batman villains are one of, like, ah, they're iconic. Um, I remember reading uh, Scarecrow's introductory comic book and just being, like, this is awesome <laughs> yeah definitely like batman's villains are great but i do lean to marvel only because like as a kid they had like the x-men cartoon and i love the x-men like wolverine was my favorite one yes. and then spider-man's from queens where i'm from so it's like oh. hello <laughs> <laughs> it's like a friendly neighbor like hey i'm like a neighbor kind of <laughs> yes <laughs> he is your friendly neighborhood so he's right there <laughs> i'm so excited for that movie i'm getting to watch it on sunday i got my tickets late but you probably don't watch the right thing getting them late because i was the the fool who like waited at midnight like a crazy person like, I'm that is not <laughs> yes so i'm like all right it seemed like it was going smooth and then like the first 20 minutes, it was a bunch of nonsense. So I didn't get the tickets till like 2 a.m. So Ooh. I'm excited though, because I love Tom Holland. I think he's my favorite. Yes. Like Perfect life action Spider-Man. Yeah. Tom Holland's amazing. <laughs> so like, I like Toby. Toby's my guy too, but mm -hmm. just Tom Holland. For Toby's me, just, the uh, Toby's like childhood OG perfect. But Tom Holland is the perfect Spider-Man. That's so, what everybody that's what agrees. Like, he's like, <laughs> you at, like Spider-Man, like how Stan Lee wrote him, he fits him perfectly. Exactly. And it's like, 
I just hope we get him for a long time. Like I know I did read he said he might not want to do it so much longer. And I'm like, wait, no, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I do I get Stay. not wanting to do, do superhero movies. I totally get it. But it's also like, but you're perfect. Like, why? So <laughs> exactly. If, if you can, if you have a stuck on an island and you can only bring three things, what three things would you bring? Oh my gosh. My uh I don't know. Uh three things. Okay. Definitely my knife. Um, one, survival stuff. <laughs> um, two, geez. I would bring, let's see, a really good book. <laughs> I got to take up my time somehow. <laughs> And, um, ooh, um, mountain of jerky. <laughs> Never go wrong with jerky. <laughs> I would feel so sad to kill an animal just because I need to eat it, you know? Yeah. But, <laughs> well, you got something to entertain yourself. You got food, and if you need to defend yourself or something, you have a weapon. Exactly. So, you know, that's that's a good solid. <laughs> Stop it planning, right? <laughs> I know. I did not that 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 question got me. I'm like, ah, I have no idea. <laughs> but I'm like, all right, we're good. <laughs> Which book? I don't know. We'll figure that out. <laughs> so I see you have a championship belt back there. So yes, show it off. <laughs> show yes. the audience the so and it's pink and pink's my favorite color. So super awesome. <laughs> so how did how did that come about as far as you winning the belt for that? <laughs> You're gonna like this story. So this is um from Fuerza Mexicana de Lucha Libre. This is a, a promotion based out of Los Angeles. I'm fortunate enough to be their champion, women's champ right now. Um when I won this belt, I'm just gonna hold it right here. <laughs> when I'm um I had just came back from touring with uh, Micromania uh, Wrestling, and uh, they were fortunate enough to bring me for a couple ma uh, a couple like a month, like three weeks, just to tour with them. So much fun. However, I was got back and I'm like this is the last show I have to do, and then I'm finally home. I'm so excited. So I'm like pumped, ready to go, and it was supposed to be a battle royal, and I'm like, oh my god. Like, half of the girls couldn't come. What was going to happen? And so I'm wrestling against these icons, and they're like, we have to wait, we have to wait. So they keep pushing it back, pushing it back to, like, tell me anything about the match. Uh -huh. And then I'm over here like, okay, don't panic. You know, they know what they're – they've been doing this for years. <laughs> it's fine. And um, I go – to the back, and I'm like, we're about to start. Like, <laughs> our match is next. I have no idea what's going on. Uh -huh. and they're like, all right. So, as so as soon as I start talking, my entrance music goes on, and I'm like, well, <laughs> wish me luck. <laughs> and so in my brain, I'm just like, okay, they called just the finish. That's all I need to go to. Just need to work to that. It's fine. We're good. Let's go. I enter. I'm like, I just need to stay out of their way. This is going to be great. Get to that finish. It's going to be a fun match. It was a fun match, <laughs> but because <laughs> she calls something inside of the ring, uh -huh. and she calls a plancha, and I don't get up to the rope, third rope and throw it. I just throw myself there and because I'm not thinking I need to show up for anything. I'm always trying to like let other people have the floor. <laughs> and... Uh, Surprise to me, she doesn't kick out after that plancha. And I'm like, oh my gosh, someone's going to yell at me. I was not supposed to win. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am panicking. I am thinking, oh gosh, I screwed up this show for them. They're going to they're gonna reprimand me. I swear I'm going to have another match to give the belt back, this and that. So I, <laughs> so I get up and I'm looking at Tiffany, who I had just pinned to win the, win the belt. <clears throat> and, and she goes... Get onto the get onto the third rope. You you won. And I was I get onto the third rope and I'm still thinking it's fine. They're just gonna throw me off the ropes and take the belt from me. Like it's fine. They 
I'm sure this is the way it's going. I'm on the ropes, literally just like, I, I what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, embarrassingly, I, it took till the promoter himself came out to the ring to give me the belt that I was like, oh, I actually won. <laughs> Oh, the, the promoter actually, oh, okay. <laughs> and so, <laughs> as soon, I was still trying to, like, I couldn't, I, it happened so fast that I couldn't, like, have emotions <laughs> until I go out to the back. I go up the stage, go to the back, turn the corner, and I see my coach standing there, and I just start crying. <laughs> oh. I said, uh if i knew i was gonna if i if i knew i was gonna win um i sh i should have uh oh, gosh i can't remember what i said exactly but basically that i if i if i knew i was gonna win i i wish i i could have done more for for everybody in the crowd and stuff like yeah that. he's like relax it's okay like <laughs> just be happy and i was like oh yes <laughs> i'm very grateful to them profeta and everybody who um what trusted me enough to give me this <laughs> <laughs> well that that's crazy. super cool i mean i guess it's i guess a way to surprise you like this yeah like, kind of kept it really hush hush to be like surprise <laughs> <laughs> but it's so see, cool though yeah oh see it's i uh, it's so early for me in my career because um i'm going to hit a year of wrestling in january so I, it's just something i never thought would happen in a year <laughs> so getting it i'm like wait so you guys are saying you trust me enough to be your champ wait <laughs> so it was it was a nice surprise yeah, that's cool and congratulations like i don't know when you won it but like just that story is like a really cool story anyway it's just like yeah oh, I really did. like you was just generally like oh like wait me like that's super that's awesome cool. and again it's in pink and i love pink pink's my favorite color <laughs> so, i'm like wait where's so the camera it's super cool <laughs> <I'll tell>. <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to give you the chance to tell the audience where they can find you if you have anything you want to promote any shows coming up in 2022 the choice yeah of course um so you can find me on instagram gem gemini.cx um facebook same thing gem gemini um i am on twitch as well i am streaming a lot more often that is gem gemini cx as well uh cx because it makes a little face if you're if you're wondering why <laughs> and i am going to be having matches posted on my instagram facebook um in the uh california area as well as uh i will be in hawaii next month so that's oh, pretty nice. fun <laughs> so if you're out there <laughs> cats audience We'll see. <laughs> I'm super excited to see what uh, this next year brings me. It's, I, I'm going to manifest it. <clears throat> me and Kat are going to manifest it right now. It's going to be a very busy year. I'm going to be meeting lots of people, going to different states, and we're just going to thrive next year. We're going to yes. thrive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Preach. <laughs> Thriving and manifesting for 2022. I'm so yes, down for it. <laughs> so yeah, check me out on Instagram, check me out on Twitch, or check me out on Facebook. I am really bad at Twitter. If I had that, I will give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to thank you so much for agreeing to come on. I always love talking to wrestlers as like a really huge fan. Um, but thank you so much. This was such a fun conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I know. I know. I went off in different tangents, but it's it was perfectly. So fun. <laughs> it is perfectly fine. I love to have people who like to talk back and forth, so it's not like a weird conversation. I'm like, oh, what's my ex now? So it won't seem weird or like, mm -hmm. you know, like a boring car. You want the conversation to feel like fun, and this is a really fun conversation. Like you're super cool, super <laughs> sweet. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This was honestly a lot of fun and I felt super comfortable. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. So as she mentioned, I will have all the links in the description. So please give her Twitch a follow, watch her stream, 
check out Instagram, find her on Facebook, support. And if you are in the California area or happen to be in Hawaii in 2022, by all means, make sure you go check her out and see what she does live. That is it for this episode, the last episode for me for 2021. So it's like super cool, <laughs> super awesome to like, you know, do this as the last episode. It'll be such a fun episode. But until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Shh. <laughs>